hello everybody how are we doing today um so we're gonna be um taking part in the next series uh, of our 65 dollar kubernetes cluster on digital ocean and today what we'll be focusing on is getting our persistent volumes back by digital oceans block storage within our kubernetes cluster if you don't have a working kubernetes cluster you can look at uh, my youtube profile it has a video on setting up set cluster on DigitalOcean. You need a DigitalOcean account and you need the cube uh, CTL binary. All right, um, let's dig into it. So first things first is I'm only gonna get uh, a file from my GIST account. You can go to gist at github.com forward slash to and look for a file called DigitalOcean secret. I need you to download the file you can always use the raw and then create a temporary folder somewhere on your console and you can use wget to get the file great so we've got the file now what we need is our access token which we'll get from digital ocean um, go to your account go to api uh, generate a new token it's be. now this is the only time you will see this token what you need to do is go to a site called base 64 and encode.org and you need to encode the T the key the access token and replace that here right now we need to make sure we're still connected to the same cluster going to get the note here to check to make sure I'm there and then I'm going to just apply the configuration straight away to make sure that the secret is generated all right and let's expect it okay it's in the cube system namespace and we've got it it's there now next thing we're going to do is we're going to um get to run a, st a script which will modify our yeah so try and get the digital ocean block storage a pv it's all in my gist account okay and just gonna double get that now what this script is going to do is that it's going to reconfigure the kubelet service to have the volume mount plugin loaded once the service starts up. So I'm just gonna SSH core and oh actually we can since it's a script we can just run it in set so I'm just gonna do that and bash dash s and we'll pipe the script in. Alright now we need to also do this for all the worker nodes as well. It's important that all the nodes have this script um, because the plugin is going to be used on all the nodes as well. Um, get the last one, no, third node. Make sure not to run it twice accidentally. And the final node. Great. There's a file on the server that we need to modify. This file is what would tell Kubernetes or uh, the cube controller itself what, um, where and when and how to load the plugin. Also, we're going to correct a little issue that was created, which was um, the um, SSL certificates 
to path to the root SSL certificates in that file are corrupt. So, well, not corrupt, they just don't exist. Alright, so it's in Kubernetes, manifests, Kube controller manager. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is look through the changes in the file that I have. It's right here, that's the first thing. Under spec containers command, need to add this file. Okay, just gonna tap that properly. Please bear with me, guys. My internet is a bit wonky. All right. So the next thing we need to do. These instructions are there, by the way. We need to add the new volume mount under volume mounts, which is under spec containers volume mounts, right? So we add one more volume mount here. Just paste it here. Then we need to update user share certificates. We need to update etc SSL sets with the user share sets, and that's on the volumes because this is core OS. If it was Ubuntu, the etc SSL sets would live where they are, but since this is core OS, they keep them separately somewhere else. Finally, we need to add the actual volume path. Okay, so we'll add that as a new record. Just make sure everything is okay. And save that. And once we save that, we need to reboot, reload the Kubernetes service and reboot it. Things looking for. There we go. Okay. All right. So let's check to make sure everything's a okay. I would know if there's any. I'm just gonna look for service accounts. Okay. I'm going to create a service account. Just call it KKK, make sure that everything works okay. Great, everything looks okay. So I'm just gonna delete that. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I like to check to make sure that I didn't mess up the formatting of my script every time, or of the manifest file on the server every time I do that. That's just to make sure that everything works okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to deploy the role-based flexbug and role-based access control. We're going to deploy the provisioner. The provisioner is here. We're going to deploy the plugin itself. 
We're going to deploy the storage class and we're going to get the example file so if everything works okay we'll be good to go right just going to get the actual URL so that we can download everything using wget there we go all right so that coming So now I believe we have all the files we need. I'm just going to go through each of the files to make sure we don't have to make any modifications. Not everything seems to be fine. But we don't need this yet until we deploy the storage class. Okay, so for the storage class, it's important that we name it. I gave mine to yield on one. Right? And in the zone, you have to use the same zone that is in your DigitalOcean account. So all my zones are London 1, London 1. So that's the zone. All right. Now, since I've named mine DO London 1, my PV example, the storage class name I'm going to use is DO London 1. Okay. All right. So first things first, we'll deploy one by one. We're going to deploy the role-based access control which will give the Kubernetes which will give the plug the provisioner access to be able to um, get take a hold of the access token and then go to DigitalOcean and actually prepare the volume and attach it to the node. Great. So I'm just gonna check service account okay so we have one um, I just need to make sure there's actually a secret in there to, to make sure everything is done okay. All right, uh, yeah, there's a secret and everything is fine. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually deploy the provisioner itself. Right, and the provisioner should actually create two replicas. Great, so let's see what pods that I've created. All right, it says they're running and it's everything is fine. Then we're actually now going to deploy the daemon set, which is the plugin itself, which will do the attachments. It's it's based off of flex, and this should deploy a daemon set on all four nodes. All right. Let's see if everything works okay.
everything seems to be fine they're all running and finally we need to deploy the storage class remember you have to give it a name which I already did earlier all right then Okay, so we've deployed the storage class. Let's get it. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. Everything seems fine. All right, so we need to do the example file, which essentially specifies a PV volume for one gig. Well, I'm going to change this to one gig. So for one gig, um, read write once, and this is the container that's going to use it. So let's apply that and see if everything works okay. All right, so I'm just going to describe uh, PV, PV1. I was using the wrong syntax. All right, it says external provision is provisioning volume. External provisioning is good. Provisioning succeeded. It's created a PV. So if we go to our volumes now, we should see a volume attached to a node where that pod is deployed. Yep, worker node two has a PV volume 44BF9F, 44BF9F. Just gonna get all and just see all, everything that's running at the moment. All right, so our PC pod is running. Um, the Kubernetes cluster, uh, well, that is running, but this is gonna do all namespaces so we can see full view of the system. All right, so. We've got all our digital ocean plugins running. We've got our uh, plugin running as well. And we've got the pods running. We could also get the PV and the PVC and the PV person, person volumes and person volume claims, which shows us the PVs, the space, the, the quantities, storage class, and everything seems to be working fine. So if you've gotten to this point without any hitches, congratulations, you have successfully finished uh, attaching uh, or configuring uh, persistent volume support using DigitalOcean's storage. Thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned for more to come. We will be f trying to figure out how to get our Kubernetes dashboard running, um, figuring out how to get um, automatic SSLs running and getting Helm installed in our cluster. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and the big button <laughs> uh, that says subscribe uh, right at the bottom. See you later guys.